I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. So that's great to see. We'll get into this later. I will take that apart for you. And what we have here is a separator plate. Now just so you know here's the other part of that front band apply piston and that actually goes through into the case and where did that band go? Pulled the band out oh, here. What it does is when this right here is installed in the transmission, there's a pin. Yeah, this right here is an actual steel pin that is driven in there and it sticks out inside here and that hooks into this hole. And that's the fixed point. That just holds it steady. When the thing's all together, no matter what, the thing's not going to flop out of there. And this, this right here, Along with this on the other end of it, where did that go? I pulled it out. Applied piston. Oh, here it is. This sits on there. Okay, so this pin comes through and pushes on this and squeezes and grabs the outside of this. That's a band. Uh, okay, so now we're going to pull this off, and there's, I'll show you. If you look, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but if you look in here, there are ball bearings in there. Okay, I don't know if you can see them. Um, there's one right there. There's one right there. There's a number of them. And they're held in by this plate. So if you're the car, the transmission's in the car, you can pull it and you won't lose those balls, which is fortunate. Uh, but those are critical. They're like check balls. They're, they're critical to the proper operation of the transmission. Now what I'll do, what holds this plate in, aside from this, is this thing. Is there a marking or ID to show where those balls go? Pictures. There are witness points, but that does not, just because there are witness points, does not erase the possibility of human error. And I'm human. The last one of these did, I did. I made a mistake. I corrected it, but it, it took me a while to figure it out. So you'll see that this, this is a solenoid right here. And what it does is it has this, this hole right here. And in, under normal situations, the spring holds up closed. But as soon as you put voltage to this, it opens that little valve and kick, kicks it from, out of high gear is what it does. So now what we're going to do and there's gaskets on this and it's always good to save the gaskets until you put the new ones on because there's a couple that are different um, and now what you're going to do, I'm going to turn this okay, and you can see these balls, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There's six of them so what I did on that one that I screwed up this ball, I put in this hole Oopsie. So I forget what it would do. It would, it would start slipping after a while. And, and, and what happened is it just, I ended up doing the transmission again on my dime, but that's okay. You know, I made the mistake. So anyways, I, I need to get a little magnet. Huh? That is a, a bolt that holds the center support. Okay. Okay, so... And I'm going to amend that mistake because there were two mistakes I did on that transmission. I'll show you the other one. This one just made it shift late, if I remember correctly. The other one caused some problems. So I got my balls out of there. Uh, we should be good. This is the rear servo. You can see, anybody who knows, I'm sure there's a lot of engineers here, so they, I'm sure they, when they look at a hydraulic part, they can tell which one has to take a lot more load. So would it be this one or this one? It's the bigger one is it takes some more load because it needs to move or apply more pressure, right? So that's the back servo. I'm going to pop that one out. blood. 
Okay, this. Ooh, look at that. I don't know where that came from. See that little piece of rubber or seal? So that's your the housing that holds that. It is also spring loaded. It also has some different. I think they're accumulator pistons or something like that. I'm not sure. But as you can see, this one has has a much wider circumference or bigger circumference, so it has to apply more pressure to that rear band. And when I get that rear band out, you'll see why, because it's much stouter. Um, and I think that's for first and reverse. But I'm always welcome to be corrected. So let's see if I can get most of this fluid. <laughs> So that's pretty, a lot of fluid in these. Oh man. Now I can't wear these shoes in my house. <laughs> All right, so I'll show you how this thing comes out of here. This is your manual lever, they call it. This is kind of slick what they do here to keep this thing from floating around. This is one of my favorite things. You'd think they'd have some complicated uh, fastener. This one's been out before. It's just a finishing nail. That's all it is. It's a finishing nail. And it, this one's bent because I was able to pull it out through here because I have the pump out. In the car, you can't take the pump out to get that out if you want to take this out. So what you do is you slide it forward of as far as it goes and you take a pair of pliers and you bend it to like a 80 degrees and then you slide it out the rest of the way and when you put it back in you just straighten it out and force it in and it's not going to go anywhere because it's going to hit the pump. That's the whole idea. So Ron, is that really a finishing nail? You tell me. Go ahead, pass it around. That's just my take. I've seen enough finishing nails. <laughs> right? That's a three penny finishing nail. There you go, three penny no less. You know, I didn't know that part. <laughs> I need a wrench now. All right, this shaft will not come out. It is, it's got a, a nut on it that's holding it, so. And it's not very tight, obviously. I wonder what they charge for that at the dealership. <laughs> okay, here's your manual lever. You remember that um, that parking mechanism? It's you'll see it once I get it all apart. But this is spring loaded here, so when you put it into park and it's not in the right position, once this shaft turns and you guys all heard that, it clicks into gear. This is your manual lever. Okay, here's another source of leaks. This shaft has a... It has a metal housing seal with a rubber lip seal on the inside. It seals on this, okay? Changing this in the car is real fun. They make a special tool. There's a puller, it goes in, you, you pull the lever off and you screw this tool on the inside of this metal lip and then there's a bolt that goes through it and you turn that bolt and it pulls it out and then you've got to reinsert this. Uh, I've seen a lot of these shafts right here where people without that tool will take an awl and drive it in there to pop that seal out and they'll scratch this and then it's going to leak no matter what. Uh, this one does not look, it's not to worry though, because if you have a scratch, you can always use some brazing rod. And braze that crack or that, that gouge and then finish it back to a smooth surface. It's not under pressure, it's not a super critical, but it, the gravity feed. And the reason I had to pound this thing out, just so you know, is this nut that holds this arm on here, this lever, 
for some reason it likes to flare this shaft. So this, this gets a little lip on it. So putting it back in, I'll probably just put it in first and then put the seal in with the driver, and it, which is much easier out of the car too. Uh, one thing, a note to all those people out there in cyberspace, this seal, you want to put some RTV on the outside edge. Just a little, around the edge. Try not to get it on the rubber part, but if you don't, it will leak. I guarantee it. There's that. 